If you watch our show often or if you listen to us on the radio, you will occasionally hear me say something like, if you're a soybean farmer, I think it's a no-brainer for you to spray fungicide. It should make you money most of the time. Now, when you hear that, and especially this year, you're probably going, wait a second, I think Brian's nuts. The commodity prices aren't that great. How can this possibly pay? So today we're gonna talk a little about soybean fungicides, the best timings to get the best return on investment, and how these things can actually pay for your farm. One of the things with fungicides is the rates vary. And when we look at soybeans, when we get to the R1 stage, Generally, we still have some fairly short soybean plants, especially with the indeterminate plants in the north. Well, if you've got short plants that are half the size or less than half the size, they'll be at full maturity. Well, what do you think you need for a rate to actually give good protection on those plants? Well, of course, you're gonna need a half a rate. And you'll see that reflected on many of the fungicide labels. If you're spraying early, you can use lower rates. If you're spraying later, you need a full rate. So we do get questions about this in terms of resistance. Hey, aren't you gonna cause a resistance issue? No, think about fungicide just like you think about medicine. If there's an adult and there's a kid, well, there's an adult dose of medicine, there's a kid dose of medicine. What's the kid dose? It's just a half rate or maybe a third rate. You're gonna be just fine if you're spraying this on the small plants like Darren said. So when you get late in the season, that's when we talk about higher rates. Okay, so why did Darren bring this up first? Well, the reason why is because I brought up dollars and cents first, and I think for all of us right now, we're really focused on dollars and cents. So his point here is, hey, you know what? Number one, fungicides came way down in price this year. A lot of things are down 20%, some are down 70%. That's no joke by the time you get all the rebates. Okay, so if you're starting with only an $8 or $10 expense, you know what? If you can use half, you're four or five bucks. That's it. So you're only talking a half a bushel of soybeans, that's all you're going to have to gain. And especially when you're out there spraying something else, which you commonly are right around R1, that's not a bad time to spray. However, back to your point of resistance management, Brian, where it comes into play is not necessarily with the rate, but with the modes of action. We strongly encourage you to use at least two modes of action, and there are even some three mode of action individual products that are pre-mixed together for you to help you try and fight resistance. Now, I think two modes of action is really the line that I'd like to draw because there are a number of diseases out there that are becoming resistant to some of the fungicide modes of action we have, specifically the strabiliarins. That would be the family that has headline and quadris and aveto. We don't want to use those all by themselves for disease control because we are seeing some resistance there. But think about what we talk about all the time with weeds. We want multiple effective modes of action. So if the strobe isn't working on your disease anymore and you have a two mode of action product that contains a strobe, well that means now you only have one effective mode of action. Is that the right choice? I don't think so. Personally, I just as soon use three modes of action if I possibly can. So that's something for you to think about. The next thing is, let's talk about the timings just a little bit. We do like R1 for sclerotinia white mold, for sudden death syndrome, and also for brown spot. So if you have those three diseases, or you're worried about those three diseases, you wanna start right at R1, which is first flower. So as soon as you start seeing flowers in the field, you get out there and spray. Just understand these fungicides are not very good at curing disease, but they are pretty good at preventing disease. Just like we always talk about with fungicides, you're only going to protect the leaves and the foliage that you spray fungicide on. So again, we're in an indeterminate soybean at R1, you're still gonna see more vegetative growth. If you're in a determinate soybean and you have a fully grown plant, that's awesome. Now you're talking about, hey, how long will that fungicide last? I've got all the foliage out there. But again, if you're spraying on a smaller plant that's still growing, you're going to have to retreat again later if you're still concerned about disease, whether it's frog eye or white mold or whatever. Okay, if all you want to do is spray one time during the course of the growing season, what we've typically found is that R2, R3 kind of range is about the best timing if you only want to spray once. Now again, if you got white mold, sudden death syndrome, brown spot, you probably better start at R1 and just plan on spraying again later. But if you want to spray just that one time, what I like personally is once I start seeing just a few pods in the field that would technically be R3, that's usually when we're getting out there on our own farm. Now a lot of times we can combine things. So when we're spraying the fungicide, we will throw in a foliar fertilizer. We might throw in a biological or as we call them natural product. We might throw in some plant growth hormones. A lot of times we'll throw in 
a little bit of herbicide if we feel like we need to, and certainly insecticide if we have harmful insects. Well, and it is a good thing with soybeans when they're smaller. You can still run your ground rig through those beans, so you do have those options of spraying multiple products, and also in many cases, multiple timings to try to protect your crop. All right, people ask us all the time, what are the best fungicides to use? I just tell you, use multiple modes of action. If we're just talking white mold, well, then Endura is the best, Proline's pretty good, Topsin and Domark also will work fairly well. For sudden death syndrome, Fortix is all you've got. For almost all the rest of the diseases, use a combination. I prefer three modes of action, include a strobe, use a triazole, and then also use an SDHI. On soybeans, we do believe that using a fungicide at least once during the season is a really good option, especially once we get to flowering. If you're only gonna do one application for plant health benefits, we really like the full flower R2 to first pod R3 timing. Well, there's lots of things to consider in your crops. One may be weed control, and we'll show you how to stop this weed coming up later in the show.